Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya. And uh, what a week, Jerry, a week of consolidation. And during those moments, I think we want to talk about the fundies. Um, we certainly have to bring the, it back home. Yeah, the fundamentals. How was your week? It was a good week. Very busy, to say the least. Lots uh, of people getting into the market. Lots of people getting into the market. A lot of speaking engagements, meeting a lot of great people. It's just been a bit an honor to be invited to certain places, and it's just been great. What are what are some of the things that you're hearing from people in terms of their reasons right now to be getting into the metals? Yeah, it's strategic. It's definitely strategic time and in the strategic allocations in metals. And uh, most people right now just are not settled. They're not getting the information, the the information from their financial planners, even accountants. Um, they know something's up. They see the the rumblings in the news. A lot of news is the news cycle is just blowing up. The noise is everywhere. People are panicking, uh, unfortunately, and and they're looking at solutions. And we believe we have a solution to offer. And people want to, you know, move away and pivot away from. Uh, certain Ponzi schemes. We want to get into that a little bit later, but okay. um, this is what people are trying to get away from. I was listening to uh, an interview on King World News with Michael Oliver. Um, he's, you know, he was around the comics. He does um, kind of newsletters, um, information about the mining stocks and whatnot. And, oh, yeah. and, and he was doing a quick review of gold. And he was talking about that the last time gold consolidated, it was really in the 1600 range. And if we look at the bottom and the consolidation period for gold over the last couple of years, in fact, that it's it's around the 1800 level, mm -hmm. like where we are right now, gold trading around 1840 right. US spot price, silver's trading uh, in and around $21. And so he was saying, yeah, you know, gold has been consolidating basically around 1800. We've seen some higher prices. It kind of keeps bouncing back to this area. And when you compare that to the bond market or the stock market, being unchanged in gold is, is a pretty good prospect. I believe so. Yeah. What did you, what do you think of that? What do you think about the fact that, you know, okay, it hasn't made a massive run, but it also hasn't done any damage as it were it's buoyant gold is definitely showing its buoyancy and even silver um, being rattled around after non-farm payroll data that came out a few weeks ago obviously inflationary data a lot of jawboning from the Federal Reserve really helping uh, to bring about that volatility but settling down gold is settled settled and trying trying to nestle around the 1840 mark as you mentioned silver is around the $21 mark I did expect I was you know I thought the 1800 was going to break last week. Okay. Um, 18, 17, 85, roughly to be the my floor, um, but it didn't happen. Gold is uh, showing its resiliency in in spite of all of the rumblings in the bond markets, uh, stock stock and equity markets, even the the crypto market showing its volatility on the downside. Um, even a lot of people looking to get out of the Bitcoin and get into gold. We also offer that vehicle of exchange from converting out of crypto Bitcoin and into non-fiat because the whole point of getting into yeah. crypto to begin was to get away from the fiat currency experiment i haven't seen so much of that i haven't seen so much of a let's get out of crypto and get into the gold market i think maybe that's because people are are waiting for cryptos to move higher to mm -hmm. take profits yeah um I, i'm amazed at the rumblings of what's going on beneath the surface in the precious metals there's so much happening beneath the surface and and um you really have to be plugged in to kind of understand what's been going on and, and start to put pieces together. So, for example, not only did India import um, millions of ounces of silver last year, but Turkey did as well. Mm. And central banks continued to buy up gold. We don't really know what's happening in terms of the paper markets and you know the bank of international settlements gold being a tier one asset how much does those new th new aspects to the market play in in terms of banks having to get onto the right side of the move mm -hmm. um i was talking with someone uh, a market insider as it were this week and they were just we were talking about the fact that um as you know scotia bank is no longer in the business they're no longer even allowed to be a custodian in the business. Their vault is is um, dormant, um, their main vault on King Street. 
And who knows what, what they owed? Mm -hmm. Who knows what transactions had to be made, made right by Scotiabank over the last couple of years as well. They were one of the largest uh, players bank. in the bullion mm -hmm. who fixed the price every day, who were shorting the market, part of the, part of the big shorts. So who knows what, what kind of repositioning has been happening. And I feel like all of that repositioning in the market is potentially massive. Mm -hmm. It's behind the scenes, yeah. But in, and this is why we exist, is try to bring it to the table and bring it to light, all of these rumblings behind the scenes in the precious metal space. We brought, we brought in the happenings about the draining out of the comics and the effects of the silver squeeze that it has on, these, on the comics. And there is a ratio between the shenanigans that you know, Scotiabank was involved in was a lot of derivative trading and was a lot of uh, dishonest, uh, dishonest trading, ultimately. And when you have, you know, derivatives of silver and gold and ETFs that are not backed by the physical, and if you cannot deliver on those contracts, the physical product at the end of the contract, whatever, whenever that expires, you're guaranteed delivering. If you cannot deliver, you, you, te you technically default. So this is why we are continuously watching. There are a, a handful of experts and, and anal um, analysts in the market that are just fixated on the comics, fixated on the depositories and how much is going out, how much is being replaced. And it's exciting to watch because that when that time comes, they have a rule that says if they do f default, what has to happen? They're going to be bidding. There's going to be an auction for the silver to, to bid up the market. And prices can, can really take off and, and multiply almost daily. The number 18778 silver, the website guildhallwealth.com. Did you see that st uh, story that um, Bix Weir was talking about? that the COMEX was unable to report on the COT report. They had a, they had a hacking attack. Mm. So very, very timely. Yeah, yeah. So the COMEX apparently got hacked their systems or something. And so they couldn't report apparently on, on what was happening in the futures market. Um, I, I had, uh, I had memories of, of, uh, pipes breaking uh <laughs> right and, and the election? To, during the election like yes. everyone get out of the building so we can do something <laughs> um and it it seems it it's just a little suspect to me and if you can't report and they have no means of reporting then what is happening it, while it's all cloaked in darkness what could be happening while it's all cloaked in darkness i mean maybe i'm just prone to paranoia but i do wonder about that given you know they've they've had all sorts of shenanigans so it seems to me potentially mm -hmm. i'm purely speculating but they 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 are running out of tools it amazes me what tools they can bring out of the bag to try to keep the things going when we're resorting to oh we just got hacked um that to me says we're we're getting pretty close to mm -hmm. the end and i do believe finally that the music will stop people mm -hmm. will have their the, the entities will have their chairs that yeah. seems to me what's going on as well mm -hmm. uh, just intuitively i feel like central banks are buying all of these banks are getting onto the right side of the trade so that when it all falls into place they're like yep we're ready to go mm -hmm. just like i really truly believe one day w they will audit the fed and they will open the door and say see we haven't audited since 1948 but it's all there. <laughs> Look at it. Yeah. Shining, beautiful gold. It was always there. Mm. Right? We'll we see. don't know. We, we will see. <laughs> like the, the Fort Knox audit, we haven't, there's, there's no audit. Oh, that was another, con that was another conspiracy theory, I suppose. <laughs> Let's go down the road. Um, who's talking about that? There's been a few people talking about that the mints, specifically the U.S. mint, has been um, processing a lot of gold and silver, but not making it specifically available for public, public. consumption. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? Yeah, do you think Bixweer, that's anything? Yeah, Bixweer. Oh, that's another Bixweer. Yeah, Bixweer um, did reveal that. He, he did provide that, the statistics. And ha even further, the Silver Eagles have a little area where uh, the, that Silver Eagle, the coin, could potentially be tokenized. So there is this you know, thought of... Could the U.S. Treasury tokenize physical silver? That would be the, pretty much a gold standard 2.0. 2.0 being, okay, this is a gold standard, but it's on digital format yeah. now. But ultimately, it's backing it with something tangible, 
with silver and gold, something that JFK wanted to do. Um, and he discussed doing at length. And this is exactly what constitutional money is, though. It has to be redeemable or backed by gold or silver. That's funny. I, I When I studied crypto when it came out and when we were really looking at it, um, I guess 2015, 16, um, yeah. my impression of it was that it's, it's not dissimilar to contracts, to paper contracts. And when it's when you've got the distributed ledger technology and you can say, yes, this is backed by gold, it feels more guaranteed because there is a finite amount of tokens than than just, you know, paper that can be shuffled around, shredded, whatever. So I love the idea. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of one day having a crypto that is fully backed by gold and that audits are there. There's a transparency there. I think the balance is the towards a gold backed crypto or a central bank digital crypto that is backed by nothing you know who else uh, likes it who the brick nations brazil russia india china south africa saudi arabia all of their all of the currencies that they're discussing and they're probably already rolled out the reason why they like it is because it's backed it's something that is they all can equate to they can all trade with and they all recognize and that is one of the characteristics of money it must be recognizable they all see gold as value and they all see oil as value and they can tokenize it and trade will continue there's no more sanctions to be worried about and to, to be fearful of trade and trust will continue with the brick nations trade and trust the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com it's the real money show on am 640 we'll be right back Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website, guildhallwealth.com. If you want to own physical precious metals, you can uh, buy it from Guildhall, take direct delivery. You can do that over the phone. You can do that via our e-store at guildhallpreciousmetals.com. You can store it in a vault facility that we uh, utilize, and that means that it would be fully allocated, fully segregated. You always maintain ownership of the product, uh, easy to buy and sell, and of course it's fully insured, which makes, uh, which makes sense at a certain point. We do believe in crawl, walk, run. People, many people are new to the market, I find, Jerry, and, and sometimes mm -hmm. they want to figure out how to put this large amount of funds, get it out of the bank and into precious metals right away. And I'm always encouraging them to start small, understand the market, dip a toe in the, in the water, because there, there's a lot to learn. It's very easy. It's one of the oldest um, ways to protect wealth. It, it's real money, and it's been around for thousands of years. Yet, we, we have an investing mentality, and we have to kind of unlearn that a little bit sure. when it comes to owning real money. And so just understanding how the costs of buying this retail product goes, what's spot price, what's it cost to sell, what's it cost to store, how do you rationalize cost of doing business to hold an asset versus investments that have no cost attached to them, but do carry with them counterparty risk. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a little bit to learn there. There's a curve. And I think that as you continue to acquire, you gain confidence um, and you're gaining comfort and it's it helps. And you can do that at a quickened pace. It depends on the pace, but we definitely encourage people to start small, get a sense of how it works, and then and build up. Jerry, you were mentioning in the last segment that um, BRICS nations are looking to, to gold as far as a backing currency for trade. And I think that, that when you think about it, it makes sense. They're trying to look for an alternative to the dollar. They could be... They could be sanctioned at any time, right? There's a de-dollarization happening, and it's, as, as some would say, an opportunity to uh, reimagine, if you will, the whole financial system. And in this case, the BRICS are imagining a system that has a common backing that is not determined by one country, that can't be printed behind the backs of the other nations, and don't depend on wizards behind mm -hmm. curtains to mess with interest rates in order to bring or take away the value of that currency. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense. And it's not a new concept. There's been central banks that have backed, uh, or currencies have been backed by gold forever. Mm -hmm. So 
I, I like that idea. I think it, I think it makes sense, and I think it's going to be a trend that's only going to continue. You're only seeing more people wanting to enter the BRICS. Mm -hmm. well, well, people want the, these countries. Ultimately, are looking for trust. Yes, laddering it with a with honest money, and this is why we call it honest money, is because it's scarce. It will always have its scarcity attribute. Mm -hmm. You cannot print it, and when you don't rely on the central planners hitting the podium and and we don't know what they're going to say and how the algorithms are going to pull the wording and you know dissect and digest the news and right. all of a sudden all of a sudden right. the markets pop because of a speech yes we don't need that type of manipulation and further yeah that's exactly what happens you end the manipulation that it ends you bring the honest money and the sound money into the system we can carry on I'd love to get your your thoughts on this. I was talking to uh, a client, and you know, one thing that people are, and we were we were, I, I brought up the the U.S. debt clock mm -hmm. because we're in this lull right now. It's beginning of March. We're in a lull. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot happening to the good or the bad. Gold's sitting here consolidating. People are getting starting to get worried. Could it drop further from here? That sort of thing. And what goes through my head is you can avoid reality, but you can't avoid the consequences of avoiding reality. The debt is $32 trillion in the US. I think their debt to GDP is like 133. Um, they can't pay it back. And they're paying out, if interest rates are at like 5%, I think they're paying out a trillion in, in interest, interest payments on the national debt. And I think they bring in something like, I can't remember, I think it was like, uh, six, six trillion in, tax. in taxes. So that's a massive portion just going to interest payments. That's, it's that's unsustainable. It's completely unsustainable. So, how, how do people not see that, Jerry? Well, we see it, and we see it. We see it. How do people not see? It? Well, they're, <laughs> or they're are starting they? to see okay. it. They're starting to see it painfully. Yeah. Um, with the loss of jobs and credit cards being maxed out and defaults happening and um, foreclosures. If you look at the, the, the banking system, how they're consolidating, we're losing wings of banking systems, mortgage houses are closing down. It's all happening again. The great financial crisis of 2008 wasn't solved. Right. You solved the debt problem with more debt. You started printing currencies. You started going crazy. Canada, since 2020, printed four times the size of its economy. The loonies were just let out of the roost. They're flying around. You let inflation go. We're going to see it. We're going to see that. Well, we are seeing we it. We are, you know, gas is just, I went to bed. Gas was uh, 140. Woke up, it was 148 or 146. You yeah. know, it was just like that overnight. So we are seeing it. People are definitely waking up and, you know, the debts will matter. And they're starting to matter now when the interest, the cost to service the interest is now exceeding the revenues of the central banks. Central banks, plural. This is U.S., this is Canada, Swiss National Bank, European Central Bank, all of them. Yeah. The central bank experiment, it's good. We have, this is the reason why we need this financial global banking restructuring. Yeah, it's coming to a head. Uh, the number 18778 Silver, the website guildhallwealth.com. And people are starting to see it. And I don't know if maybe they've, they've kind of made the connection that they're a victim of it, that the governments have printed all this money and, you know they're they're confiscating wealth through taxation and through inflation and how do you protect against that because we really are in a war against uh, central banks and governments that are spending money way beyond their means and are not giving consideration to the people and then i see things like um i saw a headline about visa and mastercard working with um a country or a state to implement a digital currency not not a gold-backed digital currency that we're talking that which would make the the playing field level we're talking about a cryptocurrency that's backed by nothing right. which is back well it is backed by the control and power of an elite mm -hmm. and that's what we're really fighting against and by the way that's what really bothers me about some analysts in the market that are fatalistic towards that that's right. why we're in the gold market because we're trying to fight that mm -hmm. and if you don't like that that 
credit card companies are involved in those sorts of things, stop using your credit card. Mm -hmm. We've seen how we can use our wallets to affect change. And that's another reason why people want to get out of the banking system. Yes, they're worried. They're worried about a financial collapse. They're starting to understand how fragile it is. And more importantly, that things can be trapped. Mm -hmm. We've seen bank holidays in the past. We've seen bail-ins, um, Cyprus, et cetera. We've seen capital controls. So there is a sense that, okay, uh, there's a, a growing understanding that there's a counterparty risk there. And how do you avoid that? Having physical precious metals. What, what's another benefit of that is that precious metals are finite. And so when everyone's moving into those, the value of the gold and silver, which are so undervalued right now and oversold by the way mm -hmm. we didn't mention about that in the first segment they're they're oversold uh, which is a good sign right um and uh open interest is also quite low so these are indicators of a bottom and understanding that it's undervalued and so the they could take off immensely when people realize fiat currencies are worthless or fast becoming worthless mm -hmm. absolutely and you talked about lull in the market and there is a lull and because of you know the ongoing the Fed speeches, the FOMC minutes that are coming up, Fed Powell speaking on Tuesday, so keep an eye out for that. Potential pullback, maybe we'll see what he says. But it's all these speeches about future interest rate hikes. And what's interesting this week or last week, I, I watched, I listened to a podcast. It was it was hosted by um, it was uh, the X twenty two report. He interviewed Bob Kudla, who is the CEO of Trade Genius. Yep. And, and and trade genius academy teaching trading you know systems and algorithms he uses a lot of algorithms so he's not just a precious metals guy he's he's trading everything options stocks etc and now they use an algorithm an algorithm to determine okay where's the momentum going let's keep an eye out and here's the tip and he'll release this tip to all of the subscribers and the algorithm is now flashing for the federal reserve to pause and potentially pivot their interest rate hikes either in midsummer or fall. And when that happens, the US dollar will weaken tremendously. We were to break down that US dollar index. It couldn't even break 105. It'll break through the floor of 100 and gold and silver will have an epic breakout. And because it's a signal of two things that are happening, the fight of inflation is over. They can't do it anymore. They've lost too much money. The cost to service the interest is too much. They're going to let it go. Inflation will take off. And then we're going to see the real effects. But precious metals is that protector. The precious metals, you mentioned fight. It's not even a fight. It's just, I don't want to participate in that. Yeah. I want to step to the sideline and make money. Right. And that's exactly what precious metals are going to do. Yeah, you want to not just survive this inflationary period, but thrive. And if you looked at the 70s and you say, okay, at, at the culmination of the 70s, or not the culmination, at the end of the 70s, in 1980, when gold goes to $850 an ounce and silver goes to $52 an ounce, you've done it. You, you, you overcame it all. All you had to do was own it for a decade from $31, $35 an ounce and silver, I guess, south of three bucks. Um, had a great move from 70, 71 to 74, 75. Mm -hmm consolidated for a couple of years and then bang, it, it, it ratcheted up. No different in between 2000 and 2011, people saw the Iraq war, they said, oh, there's gonna be all this printing, then, oh, that must be inflationary, we should probably own precious metals. That looks like kids games compared to today. Um, and so it, it is looking good. I had a conversation, uh, I have, you can tell I have lots of conversations with people. I like lots. to just chat with clients yeah. and uh, to my, my own detriment, I think. And uh, we were talking about real estate, okay? And we were talking that if the average home in Toronto, where, where we live and record, is $2 million, and the price of gold in Canadian dollars is $2,500, you need 800 ounces to buy a home. And if, if housing comes off 20% and gold goes to a four to one ratio on the Dow, if the Dow comes off 20%, there's a lot of ratios, ratios, but just understanding of being conservative about where gold could go. Something like less than $5,000 an ounce, like mm -hmm. $3,500 or $3,800 an ounce. You're gonna bring your purchasing power down to in the in less than 500 to one, or, or f less than 500 ounces to buy the home. And then we went the other way. If 
if housing goes up 25% and gold goes to like $3,500 an ounce, and we said if, and the exchange rate was on par, <laughs> right? So I'm just, I'm handicapping the crap out of, out of metals. Out of metals. And it still brought it down from 800 ounces to buy a home down to 315, uh, 715 to buy a home. So you still improved your purchasing power with gold. Look, it's gone up 360% plus in Canadian dollars over the last 20 years. It's had maybe four down years. It's pretty, pretty solid. It's very solid. And that's exactly what we need. Um, this is the strategy that we employ. You don't, you don't need to – we remove the guesswork. We will pl- show you the ratios. We would suggest – we would offer our two cents when we do have a sit-down and discovery to find out what people are, people's concerns are and what they're looking at and what, how they want to thrive during this, this uncertain time. This is, the, this is the market to look at. This is the market to consider and to convert out of paper fiat failing currencies and get into your vehicle to not only st- strategically hedge against inflation, but you'll be thriving with a more tactical approach by getting more precious metals in your portfolio. And that, that 2,000 ounces of silver, 253 ounces of silver at the end of the stagflationary period, was able, you were able to purchase a home. And this is the dream that many millennials are looking at, and they think they're priced out of the market, that they will never be able to own a home. And that is our goal here at Guildhall is ownership. You're going to be owning and you will enjoy life and you will love it. Not disown everything and, and move on and, and own nothing and be happy. No, that's not how we will continue to thrive and continue generational wealth building. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. It's The Real Money Show on AM640. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. If you miss the show, you can catch us on YouTube. If you want to find out some, some of the articles that we always talk about and read about, you can catch us on Twitter or on Telegram and find out what we're watching as well. Just stay involved in the Guildhall community, if it, as it were. The Guild. Um, Jerry, you know, we, we talk a lot about central banks. We really do. And we keep talking about why they keep buying. And sometimes I'm not sure if they're our enemy or our friend. <laughs> Maybe it depends on which central banks we're talking about. And there could be good people and... You know, it's a system, so there could be good people and, sure. and That's the way people with ill intentions. Um, who knows? But w- you've, you've brought an article with quotes from the actual central bankers on why they're buying physical gold. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe that you should follow the trend and follow the smart money. And I'd love to hear what they're saying as to their reasons to be owning precious metals. Exactly. Because we talk about it all the time. We sound like a broken record that the central banks are buying. Don't take it from us. Follow the smart money and realize who's buying and why they're buying it. And I, I really delved into that because the central banks released their report, or I should say the gold, gold.org released their report titled, No Dry January for Central Bank Gold Buying. That central bank gold demand in 2023 picked up from where it left off in 2022. In January, central banks collectively added a net 31 tons to global gold reserves. It's up month over month by 16%. This was also comfort, comfortably within the 220 to 60 ton range of reported purchases, which has been in place for the last 10, 10 consecutive months, months of net buying, all buyers. So if you look at this data and, and dissect it, you're seeing the largest buyer was Turkey, this uh, People's Bank of China, also Kazakhstan. So they're continuously buying. Even the European Central Bank is in there with nearly a $2 trillion um, ton rise in its gold reserves in January. $2 trillion? No. They didn't buy $2, two trillion. Tr- sorry, $2 tons. $2 tons. tons. Okay, $2 tons. Gold. Sorry right. about that. So the question is, and it remains, like, why is See, I listen to bank? you, Jerry. Thank you for correcting me as well. Right. I appreciate I hear the you, corrections. buddy. But like, why are these central banks or why are they buying? So let's let's tune in to what Germany has said and reasons why the, the Deutsche Bundesbank is buying. They were saying the part of the Bundesbank's gold reserves, which is to remain abroad, could in particular be activated in an emergency. Therefore, one part oh. will remain. Boom. Will remain activating in, in, a, in an emergency. That's Germany. Let's move to Austria. This is what they said. 
Gold is an essential part within our strategy for crisis prevention and crisis handling and is held as liquidity reserve, but it also remains also means to diversify our investments. Turning to the Swiss... Wait a second. We've got to repeat these. Yeah. So they're holding it for protection against a crisis, additional liquidity, and general diversification on their own investments. Yes, and this is coming from directly the Austria's, uh, Austrian Central Bank, noting the liquidity characteristics of gold, Jeremy. It's benefits during a crisis and its diversification attributes as well. So they've highlighted in basically one sentence of why they're buying and they've implemented. It's one thing to say that I want to be diversified, but unless you, if you don't own gold, physical gold or silver, you're not diversified one bit. Right, because precious metals are negatively correlated to the dollar because there's no counterparty risk. So in other, in other words, gold and silver aren't actually doing anything. They're inert, mm -hmm. but the currencies could fall. Mm -hmm. um, and so you want something negatively correlated. Great, you you're, have all different numbers on red in roulette, but you have nothing on black, <laughs> zero. So yeah. you want to have a little bit on black and have a little bit of an asset that's negatively correlated, and gold does that. That's right. Switzerland. As part of a good diversification of currency reserves, a certain proportion of gold can help reduce the balance sheet risk. The Swiss Federal Constitution, Article 99, stipulates that the SNB has to hold a part of its currency reserves in gold. Poland. The Polish Central Bank says gold, due to its attributes, is a quite specific asset and traditionally has been an important component of central banks' foreign reserves. The main features which support the unprecedented role of gold at the time const constitute the rationale for holding gold within central bank reserves. Gold has been constantly perceived as a safe haven and is particularly de desirable in crisis times when gold prices increase while other core assets prices, prices have a downward tendency. And, and it goes on, Jeremy. Yeah, you know, the only thing I would say about this that I keep, you know, it's one thing to say for a crisis, for a crisis, and there's obviously an impending crisis. There's always a crisis. It always happens. Every, every few years, there's a crisis. Um, and, and some central planners like to use that as an opportunity to, to, to do some things that are underhanded. Um, in this case, the central banks are trying to do it for a positive. But at the same time, you know, precious metals perform when there's no crisis, the gold performed just fine between 2002 up to 2008. Um, it performed just fine between 2014 and 2020. So you don't necessarily need a crisis for to have a hedge in your portfolio that is still going to perform. And if you don't, if you don't trust what I'm saying, do your own research. Go to goldprice.org and look at the gold price performance chart on that site. The number, 18778Silver, the website, guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on AM640. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number, 18778Silver, the website, guildhallwealth.com. And uh, we're talking about central banks that are buying gold. They're protecting against a uh, crisis. They're using it as a diversifier. And overall, they're starting to talk about it. And I do believe as well, Jerry, as we have our discussions, that people are quickly starting to understand money. It was very easy for governments and planners to pull a fast one on people when they could state inflation was at 2% and it was in the real world running at more like 5 it would be just a, just enough off the top that people wouldn't notice over a long over a short period of time. It took a long time to realize. Wait a minute, um, you know, uh, I've 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 gotten a raise. I make a hundred grand. I got a raise for thirty grand, but my general cost of of living is now is one hundred and fifty. So I'm actually behind. People tend to think, oh, as long as the stock market's moving in the right direction, I'm winning. No, you're not. Most people took five years to get back to break even after 2008, and that did not include inflation. Mm -hmm. They were still 25% down after five years. You're still playing catch up. So it took another several years to actually be caught up to given the inflation rate. Gold doesn't care about that. Gold is going to beat it no matter what, because gold, you don't print gold and silver. It takes, it takes blood, sweat, and tears to get it out of the ground. 
It doesn't just magically appear on a, on a printing press or on a screen. Mm -hmm. And those mining companies are subject to the same issues of inflation that, that we all are. Yes. They have to pay energy costs. They have to pay for machinery and equipment that all costs more. And it's not as though there's a sea of it somewhere and we're just, you know, cleaving off a bunch of metal. No, it gets harder and harder and harder. You have to go further, further afield. And now there's the, what is it, the ESG or the environmental things that they have to comply okay. with mm -hmm. and the geopolitical risks that are involved all around the world. So it doesn't get easier. And there's clearly deficits when it comes to silver specifically. It can't be understated what a perfect storm it is. Mm -hmm. And yet people would say, well, how come it hasn't happened yet? Mm -hmm. Very short term. It's all temporary. It's cyclical. And we just have to allow the central planners ultimately make their mistakes. And that, that's, what, that's what precious metals thrive upon. Besides the, the supply and demand attributes, the, the fundamentals of supply and demand, um, the, the fundamentals of, of inflation, really it leads to the ultimate devaluation of the currency when you devalue it to a point where it's lost the trust and credibility around the world when it's not being used in trade that's it the system's finished the finite the 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 fiat currencies have a limited life lifespan of approximately 100 years per currency if you're not backing it up you're in a sinking ship you're in a sinking boat that currency is going to eventually die off and you will have a new currency roll out. Do you remember when they said uh, inflation was transitory? That was huge. Do like what? What happened? What does that mean? It's Come on, guys! You either know what you're doing or you don't. <laughs> you, you right? If you had a if you had an employee that was giving you lines like that, and it's been two years, and you're sitting there going, "All you keep doing is feeding me lines. You keep feeding me lines. That are you? Are you?" intentionally trying to deceive me yes or are you really bad at your job mm -hmm. either one is not good either one says you're either inept or you're deceptive both are bad so we can't we can't just call up our representative and say fire that guy right i mean janet yellen the former chairman of Ugh. the federal reserve or chairwoman she She's over. She now she's at the treasury. She's saying, "Oh, we need to lift the lift the um, the debt ceiling. The please. debt ceiling. We're gonna have to st we're gonna have to take the money from pension plans. Like, w obviously, obviously, she doesn't care about people. Let's let's be nice about it. And now she's taking she's taking photo ops in in Ukraine, mm -hmm. right? She's taking photo ops. She cares. She cares about those you know the Ukrainians. Uh, okay." Okay. What about what about <laughs> the Americans? You her, know? her duty as you, the Treasury Secretary. Yeah, you should be taking care of them first. I think. I think. But it just kind of goes to show. And by the way, she was ground zero for the subprime crisis in San Francisco. Couldn't see it coming. Could not see it coming. Did not see it coming. <laughs> right? Bernanke didn't see it coming. Oh no! It, if it if it happens, it'll be it'll be contained to maybe a, 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 a city or a, or, or a state, totally wrong. I mean, we could go all day on how one particular central bank has continued to get it wrong. When you see central banks buying gold, you say, okay, now you're, now you're starting to make sense, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now you're starting to do something that sounds rational and logical. Right. So I don't want to sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth when I say this. No, no. Uh, but you can tell when someone's saying something that's crazy. Yes. It, it, the inflation was not transitory. Right. And So what, us num what were you looking at? Come on, guys. Well, let's not forget this. Let's not like – you got to memory hole that one. Say, remember they said that. Yeah. And and remember, remember I, were we conspiracy theorists to say that it wasn't? <laughs> Of course, <laughs> exactly. These have come to pass, Jeremy. They're all everything that we have stated. You know, you can you can try to say it's been a conspiracy theory, but they have all come to pass. And Canadians and uh, and citizens everywhere, they're being gaslit everywhere pertaining to cent why the central banks are buying. We were told by Bernanke, you know, why why do why do people why do countries buy gold? Why do we what? It's tradition. Yeah, he what, said tradition. <laughs> He said, it's I don't tradition. know, it's just tradition. We just rattled off the reasons why central banks 
are buying gold. N- none of them said tradition. It's for strategy and 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 having the potential, the top set potential. It's it's offering more and more benefits than just tradition. And the gaslighting of numbers, and this is why I love going to the shadow stats. Um, you know, John Williams authors the. Um, he holds a BA in econ- economics and uh, MBA from Dartmouth. He has this newsletter which we subscribe to, and we want to share the information and share the value with our listeners um, because it's important. We're tired of being gaslit. We're being told inflation is 6.41% in December, whereas his data that used the 1980 calculation of inflation showing uh, inflation down to about 15% from 16%, all because of what you know, this, the draining of the strategic petroleum reserves is what he cites. And it's, it's further, if you look at where, according to these charts, where gold prices would be ut- utilizing his inflationary data, gold prices should be north of about $2,300 using this data, which shows that inflation is actually well north of 16%. And gold prices year end should be about 2300 if, you know, if this gaslighting and and the skewing of our gauges can end. And I think eventually those gauges that are just lying to us all over the place from GDP to CPI, everything's coming to coming the spotlight are on these these liars, Jeremy. That's what they're doing. They're lying to us and people have had it. Gold is honest money. It it's truth. It's been around for thousands of years and it will be here for who knows how much longer mm-hmm. the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com if you want to get some physical precious metals in your portfolio into your rsp fully allocated fully segregated give us a call um also natural fancy color diamonds another great asset he who owns the gold makes the rules the debts don't matter until they do and you can avoid reality but you can't avoid the consequences of avoiding reality so it's time to start making some changes this has been the real money show on am 640 and we look forward to speaking with you next week